to clean City Hall and the airport. <laughs> Saving $4 million a year by what? By not hiring government employees, union employees. So they're going to use now, of course, illegal aliens to keep all the swimming pools open and staff. The city's replacing its city workers with contractors. These are cases where the question's being asked, is this core service at a city level? Said Michelle McGurk, senior policy advisor to the San Jose mayor. For years of whittling staff and cutting back on services, they can't move the whole town to China. <laughs> Just can't work. <laughs> they can't do it. So towns and cities are now outsourcing their most basic functions of local government, from policing to trash collection. How do you, you know, know outsource policing? Oh, it's coming. Go get go rent a copy of the movie RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> it will be private police forces. Yeah, they're coming. You can count on it. You can count on it. Why? Well, let me just tell you why, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, privatize the bus here's, service. Dude. Here's the painful hard truth. You hire a teacher in California, she now gets no pension, she gets no benefits, but she has to pay into the pension system, all right, with through her taxes to pay for retired teachers who are making a hundred grand a year not working. Okay, the whole system's broke. Same thing as Social Security. It's not going to work. None of this works. It's so bad. I mean, obviously we want to take 15 million people that came in from the southern border and naturalize them and make them uh, U.S. citizens so they'll pay into the Social Security system so the boomers can retire. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, the boomers will be making more on Social Security than the, than the laborers are going to be making. <laughs> so that doesn't work either. None of this works. The whole system's broke. Do you think that we're having a great recovery in all the growth and all the new homes and buildings that are going up and the grand opening signs? Yes, no government employees in San Jose, but this one caught my eye. Roads to ruin. Asphalt is replaced by cheaper gravel. We're going back to the Stone Age. little article buried in the weekend Wall Street Journal. Spiritwood, North Dakota. A hulking yellow machine inched along old Highway 10 here recently. A summer scene that seemed as normal as the nearby corn swaying in the breeze. But instead of laying a blanket of steaming blacktop, the machine was ripping up the existing asphalt and turning it into bits. I've seen that. Yes, but they put it on the side and then right. they repave it. They're not going to repave this. This is the new road. When counties had lots of money, they paved a lot of these roads and tried to make life easier for the rural people who live down here, said Strutsman County Highway Superintendent Mike Zimmerman, sifting the dusty black rubble through his fingers. Now it's catching up to them, even. Outside this speck of a town, population 78, 10 mile stretch of road had deteriorated to the point that residents reported seeing ducks floating in potholes. <laughs> That's a big pothole, <laughs> Mr. Zimmerman said as the road wore out, the cost of repaving became way too high. Last year, the county spent 400 grand on an RM300 Caterpillar rotary mixer to grind the road up making it look more like an old homesteader trail it once was. Paved roads, historically emblems of American achievements, are being torn up across rural America and replaced with dirt roads. Well, you know, you talk a lot about small-town America on your... Small-town America trip. is done. But America's done. I mean, again, yes, these were symbols of the greatness of this country. But it wasn't good enough for Wall Street. No, nope. Wall Street gave it all away. Oh, yeah, let's get rid of all these factories and all these employees and people that want to buy American. Invest in our mutual funds so we can rebuild these same factories that we know you you Americans don't want to do. And then we'll get... We know you don't want to build cars. We know that you don't want to make cardboard boxes, and you don't want to make greeting cards, and you don't want to make canned goods and and processed foods and all that. We know that you don't want to do it, so just give us your money, and we'll build them over there in China. That's right. And we'll get you a job peddling hey, debt. I remember 30-year-old kids on CNBC going, oh, yes, these companies are saddled with employees in America and saddled with factories here in America, and these, are these, these companies, we need to get rid of all these people. I used to love the glory days when they'd come out and announce, yes, we're laying off. 5,000 people, and their stock would go up like 12%, and these freaking 30-year-old punks 
would come out on TV and tell you what a great management team this company has. Now, now they actually want trying to get a stock to go up because they're hiring people. They it doesn't work. Did, they tried going right. the double dip last week. Oh yes, we're going to be hiring people. But companies are now. They didn't what? They didn't, oh, their stock's going to go up now because they're hiring. They didn't nah, mention any company, but they said we took a survey. We took a survey. And of course, what's left, of course, is the lying, cheating, stealing of the gutted out country. This country's gutted out, man. If you don't believe it, go drive it. Take every back road you can. Of course, the interstates all look the same. They got you know. They're all the same. You drive the interstates, the outskirts, or the Home Depots, the all yeah, the guards and restaurants. Go in it because most of those Home Depots, Walmarts, and what a lot of them are closing. Uh, and well, not are they, they may be open, but the shops all around it, oh, that's, oh, they're gone. George Bush tried to save them with his SBA loans. Oh but boy, none of those people could make with the payments. Your, your nail salons and your. But it doesn't matter. Here's another government-owned company, Citigroup, for the first time now is publicly detailed. detailed uh, the way it dressed up its balance sheets to uh, hide risk from the public. Oh, they're admitting to what B of A admitted yeah. to last week. Yeah, and then, uh, of course, uh, well, no, Goldman Sachs. Uh, so so that, now we're going right. to get the, okay, now that you gave us all this money and we, we, we lied to right. you to get it. Right. Yeah, well, now we'll tell you about it. Well, it's interesting. We'll be back. Patriot Radio News Hour. Back to the basics here of lying, cheating, and stealing in America. Hey, welcome back here, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Cheaters from Joe Jaquin. Yeah, another article buried about Citigroup. Yeah, we kind of <coughs> lied. Excuse me, what was that? Well, we're uh, lied about our debt. They hit billions of dollars in debt from investors by reclassifying certain short-term trades as sales. I like that. When they should have been classified as debt. (laughs) (laughs) Bank of America came out last week and said, yeah, we lied and we hid and we did this. Now Citigroup comes out this week. Nobody cares. Doesn't anyone go to prison for that? No, are you kidding me? How does that not happen? You want to stop the the, the craziness? Well, they tried that. Start sending people to prison and it'll be over with. They tried the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, and they actually never enforced it, where CEOs had to sign off after 9-11 and after all that. They had to sign off saying that if you're— You guys should all go to prison. Well, see, they tailed it. Why? Because the governor, they sat down and they go, look, all right, you guys going to sign off on the GAO accounting books? So uh, all you people in the Treasury Department, if it's not true, you're going to prison? And they all looked at each other and they go— yeah, that's a bad law. <laughs> that's a bad <laughs> law. <laughs> oh, boy, wouldn't you love to have been in that room? And you know that? what? It's really not that big either. So, yeah, it's not. Been, no. They acknowledge in their securities filing that they've been lying. Of course, they called it misclassified. Uh, as little as nine, as much as uh, $9.2 billion they took off their books for earnings to beat the street by a penny every month or every quarter. So let me see. Let's see if I got this right. The great recovery. All the government-owned companies still, every well, all of them, all the banks are lying, cheating, and stealing. Of course, all the government money they gave to the banks, they bought stocks with it. Okay, that's what they did. I mean, come on. The Dow goes from 6,700, roars up to 10,000. Now, somebody put an article on George Report going, the Dow may crash to 7,500. I'm like, it already did. It already do that. The Dow may retest its lows of 6,700, which... Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, people are not going to enjoy. Uh, what else they have here? Oh, a little over the weekend, Innkeepers USA Trust. Somebody should tell them. As, as the banks and Obama administration, everybody, the great recovery because their real estate investment trust that owns more than 70 hotels is now preparing to file Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the coming days. You know people, what? Even Terry's consignment article in the... Uh, our paper today. Terry's can sign and design. For yeah, her. they file in for Chapter 11. But don't bankers. worry, if she's got any of your stuff, you can go get it for one of their three stores. This is a pretty one, though. Innkeepers is a pretty big one. File for bankruptcy as soon as today. The company laboring under more than a billion dollars in debt holds interest in 73 extended stay hotels and other properties of operating under the brands such as the Hampton Inns, Courtyards by Marriott, an embassy swing. Nobody likes those places. I guess those not. are those are dump holes. Because the recover everything's recovered. As long as it's not a house, a business, a bank, 
Apparently, people are buying used cars. There's the recovery. We need Kurt Russell to come back out. Take a test drive with Toto. Give us a moment. Uh, gold's at 1182 Silver at $17.65. Platinum's unchanged at 1508 Palladium's down four at 444 And after Friday's big market sell-off, Wall Street's up 40 at 10100 and Oh, yeah, 30. down 260 Friday. Yeah. So we were closed Friday. It was kind of fun, actually. I loved it. So we closed this I just Friday. got out of here. It was 115 It was 1000 yeah, try, Trying to get out of town? Good luck. U.S. $20 gold's 200 over melt, 1382 Great buy on them. Call us 1-800-951-0592 and get some locked down. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow, good Lord willing. Until then, Eric Cedars from Joe Jaquin and all the wonderful people here and that help us do this. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.